Hello and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Dr. Westman. This episode is proudly brought to you by Adapt Your Life Academy. Today we're going to be chatting about how to test your cholesterol. So many of us have been confused about cholesterol in the past. And today we're going to learn what you should test when looking at your cholesterol profile. We also have a special bonus for you today, which is brought to you by Dr. Westman, and it is his guide, The Truth About Keto and Heart Health. We'll tell you a little bit more about this at the end of today's episode, and we'll also put a link for you in the description. Let's get started. Firstly, what is the, the correct term for a cholesterol test? Well, uh, there are many different <laughs> terms and names, which is why it's so confusing to people. I think um, when you go to your doctor and they check a cholesterol level, really what they do is they order something called a lipid profile. I know it even introduces another term, right? <laughs> so a lipid profile, lipid really just means a, a fatty substance and cholesterol is a type of lipid. So, you know, but even then the, you look at the laboratory test that's on your, your panel when, it, when you get it and you look at it and it get, brings in the language of total cholesterol, LDL, HDL and triglyceride and non-HDL. So these are all, again, terms that describe the particles in the blood and the amount of cholesterol on these different particles in the blood. So suffice it to say that the way to measure cholesterol level, knowing that it's more complicated than just the cholesterol, is to get a fasting blood sample uh, at a doctor's office or now in some places you can go to a, a, any lab test sort of uh, like at a real retail mall, you can order and get your own test done, but it should be done fasting overnight. So when you haven't eaten over a 12 hour period, you go in and get a blood sample done uh, so that the, a meal doesn't interfere with the, the components of the bloodstream. So it's really just a blood test, which is kind of neat, uh, you know, but uh, it, then you have to realize it's, just a blood test, you know, that uh, one time during the day. Now, why are there different tests within this lipid panel? So you mentioned HDL, LDL, and triglycerides. Why are there these different tests within the lipid panel? Yeah, you know, the, long ago, it was a simple sort of, and, and sort of not really very scientific association that, that the total cholesterol in the blood had something to do with the cholesterol in the arteries of atherosclerosis and uh, people who had had heart attacks and strokes. And, and it really wasn't a solid foundation, but it kind of started with the measurement of total cholesterol. And, and as time went on, that wasn't sufficient. It, it, the total cholesterol didn't explain all the different variations. So they started to look at the different types of, of particles in the blood. That's the LDL, the low density level lipoprotein and the HDL, the high density lipoprotein. These are like the, the cars that carry around or, or boats that carry around cholesterol in the blood. And it was found that while uh, total cholesterol didn't predict every, so people were getting heart attacks and strokes and having normal total cholesterols. So, so they had to explain why it was more complicated than that. And the LDL particles carry around a lot of cholesterol and the HDL, it was figured out the uh, HDL and LDL do different things in the blood and that the higher the LDL was, the more likely you were to have a stroke or heart attack. And, but the higher the HDL was, you were less likely to have a heart attack and a stroke. So that's where the term good cholesterol and bad cholesterol came about. But even then, that's not uh, enough to explain everything because there will be people with high LDLs who, who don't get heart attacks or strokes. And there are people with low HDLs who don't get or, or who do get this. Right? So it's complicated. And as, as you get ever more into it, it gets ever more complicated. But so total cholesterol isn't enough to explain uh, what happens with people over time in terms of the heart disease. So you have these other sub components below. So is total cholesterol the, sub to the sum total of the LDL, the HDL and the triglycerides? Well, it would be the, the sum total of the, L the cholesterol on the LDLs 
the particles and the cholesterol on the HDL is going around. It turns out the triglyceride is a different beast. So now add in that it was also found that these triglycerides and they're carried on VLDL particles. They, when they're high in the blood, they do give risk toward heart attack and stroke. So the, the old way of looking at total and LDL wasn't enough. So add in now the triglyceride component, which is another risk factor in the blood that doesn't often get talked about. Uh, so, and the high triglycerides usually go along with low HDLs. So it, it kind of fits in the pattern of, of that high, L, high HDL being good meant the low was bad and the low HDL is related to high triglyceride in the blood. So the high triglyceride turns out is, it's as bad as the high LDL ever was. So this is why it's very confusing. It's confusing even to doctors about how complicated this is. Um, but all of these are measured on that one simple fasting blood test. You'll get the total cholesterol, which is the cholesterol that's on all of the particles. And then the LDL cholesterol is the cholesterol that's carried on the LDL. The HDL cholesterol is the cholesterol that's carried on the HDL. And then the triglyceride is something totally different. So, but even then that didn't explain everything. <laughs> so now you have on these panels, the non HDL cholesterol. So you'll see that on your, your lipid panel, but it's even more complicated because that LDL on this panel isn't even directly measured. It's just calculated. So you, know, you, you get the fasting test and then the first round that doctors do generally um, uh, is important to do, but if it's complicated and it doesn't seem right, there's even another advanced testing that you can do. Now, uh, I don't want to complicate the, the conversation, which uh, cholesterol is a complicated conversation, um, but you can also, within the LDL, there's another test that you can do, which actually determines the particle size. Uh, it turns out that there's large and fluffy particles within the LDL, and there's small and dense particles within the LDL, and one is preferable and one is not preferable. Exactly. So the whole cholesterol story got even more complicated because when people were looking at LDL and heart disease, some people with LDL, high LDLs didn't have the heart disease. Turned out they had a certain type of LDL, which is that larger particle or the light fluffy one. The people who had LDL that was mostly the small particles have more risk for the heart disease. So there's a good LDL and a bad LDL. You know, so even now that you know that, you know, for years we've been taught that LDL it means lousy, you know, and bad, but there's actually a good LDL and a, and a bad LDL. And that's actually true for HDL. There's a good HDL and a bad HDL. And you can actually get these measured. It's a, a, a simple, but not, most doctors don't do it automatically. This is called advanced lipid testing or lipoprotein testing. Again, it's a fasting blood test. You go in, but the doctor has to specially order to look at the LDL particle number and particle size. And the actual term, I mean, you may need to teach your doctor about this, is a uh, NMR lipoprofile or a VAP test, or you're just asking for the LDL particle and, and size will help the doctor clue in to what test to order. So now we've spoken about the blood test, uh, the lipid profile, which, which looks at our total cholesterol, our LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. Um, we spoke about the particle size test, that they test the, the LDL, which, which, what, what the particle size is. And then there is um, something else. Um, um, there's also a test, um, a carotid artery test. That will, that will also help determine your cardiovascular risk. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, right. So, you know, the, the blood tests themselves are what we call predictors. They're, they don't tell you whether you have disease or not. And this is quite, um, it's often confused and confusing that a doctor will, will assume that you have disease when we're just looking at the blood test. So sort of like, um, uh, the, if the arteries are the, the road and the cars are the lipoproteins, the, measuring the cars on the road doesn't tell you how, uh, 
how many potholes there are in the whole, in, a, in the road. So the potholes in the road being the disease of atherosclerosis itself. So you can actually measure the arteries directly, which is what we're trying to prevent the disease on the arteries with these blood tests. And one way to do that is with ultrasound, uh, non-invasive, you know, kind of like checking the, a baby growing during pregnancy, the ultrasound of the neck artery called the carotid, the uh, uh, artery of the neck, and then the major artery of the, the belly called the aorta. Uh, and these tests actually are done all over uh, and sometimes outside the medical system. So you can actually know whether you have atherosclerosis or not by getting these tests. And it's the blood measurement of the lipids won't tell you whether you have the disease or not. It's just a predictor kind of test. So the, so the carotid artery test will actually tell you, it is a predictor. It will tell you if you have the disease or not, whereas the lipid profile will not tell you. It just, it just is giving you clues. Right, so the, the ultrasound will tell you if you have the disease. It, it's not a predictor. You know, um, it, it's kind of like you ask the weatherman or weather woman if it's raining. It's, they look at predictions when doing this ultrasound is you're outdoors and you know whether it's raining or not. It's not just the prediction of it. Uh, and yeah, I highly recommend people who are at high risk or, or worried about whether you have the atherosclerotic disease or not to get these ultrasound measurements. I think it's, it's simple, easy, it's risk-free because it's just using ultrasounds. And while it's not perfect, uh, especially we wanna know if you have heart disease or not, uh, it doesn't measure the coronaries, but they are highly predictive of if you have atherosclerotic disease in the neck, it's very likely you'll have it in the, in the heart arteries. Likewise, if you don't have it in the neck or, or in the aorta, it's very unlikely you're going to have it in the heart. And, it, and while imperfect, it's better than just measuring the blood tests. Now, Eric, I also believe that it is not that expensive to do this test. No, that's right. And well, it, if the medical system did it, if you ask your doctor to do it, then there's all the issues of whether insurance will pay. And, and, and they, in some hospitals, it's quite expensive to pay out of pocket because they're not used to doing that. And in our area, there are some companies that will do it for you. You look online for these kind of screening companies and they they come around and you schedule with them and you do it outside the medical system. But it's the same type of valid medical test. Now, before we go, I've got one more um, question to ask you. Um, I know that when you do the blood lipid profile that we spoke about, some doctors actually call for an ultra-sensitive CRP, which um, is different to your regular CRP in the fact, in the, in the fact that the ultra-sensitive CRP is specific to cardiovascular infection. Is that correct? Yes. So the um, thinking about what causes the atherosclerotic disease, which is the arterial disease that leads to heart and heart attacks and stroke, the thinking is that it's not just cholesterol that, and it's not just the diet that causes this, but it's inflammation that sets the stage for the body to actually have damage on the arteries and the body comes in and tries to clean it up with inflammatory cells. So the CRP test, the C-reactive protein is a way to look for inflammation in the body. So it's really kind of a, um, a related uh, thing, but it's not checking cholesterol at all. It's checking for inflammation. So what's fascinating is that you know, chronic infections, even like oral disease, uh, mouth periodontal disease uh, can cause increased inflammation and that can actually cause heart disease, arterial disease in different places. So anything that leads to inflammation can uh, lead to the atherosclerotic disease. It's not, so that there's more than just cholesterol when it comes to heart disease and stroke prevention. And it's important to know that because the doctors often kind of obsessively focus on the cholesterol. Fantastic. Well, that's all we have time for today. But what's going to be quite exciting is that next week, we're going to be talking about how to interpret um, and understand these results that we just spoke about today. Um, before you leave, don't forget, we have a special bonus for you, which is the truth about keto and heart health brought to you by Dr. Westman. If you're worried about cardiovascular, this guide is definitely something that you should get. 
you'd like to learn more about our upcoming courses, remember that we've got a new course um, that is about to launch in November, and that is um, going to be a, a course on cholesterol. Uh, the course is going to be called End Your Cholesterol Confusion, um, and it's going to be absolutely amazing where Dr. Westman tackles everything to do with cholesterol in a simple and easy way. By the end of that course, you'll be an expert at understanding results and understanding cholesterol and everything there is to know about cholesterol. Um, and if you'd like to learn more, you can find a little bit more information on that um, at www.adaptualifeacademy.com. Eric, thank you so much for your time. And uh, once again, we look forward to meeting you next week where we talk about uh, understanding the results. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye.